My real name is Alfred Hirotoshi Nishikawa. It's on my birth certificate. I was born in San Francisco in 1938, so that makes me almost 76 years old. When I was about three years old, we were uh, moved to uh, Salinas uh, Assembly Center and then to a camp in Poston. My father was a, was a professional chef. Uh, grew up in Gilroy, California, where I became interested in chemistry. My chem teacher, who was also my photography club advisor, encouraged me to go to Berkeley and become a biochemist. During which time I had a good fortune of meeting a woman who became my wife. I met her in a biochemistry lab. How about that? Towards the end of my second part of my career, which was with Smith Klein in Philadelphia, I got connected with people who were involved in civil rights. The rest is history. February 19, 1942, President Roosevelt signs Executive Order 9066, ordering the removal of all persons of Japanese ancestry from military zone one. That was basically the coastal cities all the way from Seattle down to uh, San Diego. Houston was in, in, uh, in military zone one, except that it's so far away from the uh, coast that um, they built a camp there. We got notices to um, show up at the uh, Salinas uh, so-called relocation center. We were thrown on these trains, they pulled down all the shades, you know, so we, nobody could see us and we couldn't see where we were going. Only when we got there did we find out what it was. <laughs> My parents, like a lot of uh, adults, did not talk about the camp experience to their family, to their kids or grandkids. The kids and grandkids were beginning to ask their parents questions. It was not until after college, after graduate school, when on a visit back to California that, you know, over an evening conversation might uh, quiz my, my folks about it. The things I remember were what you would remember as a kid. The um, government uh, paid professional photographers to take pictures of all the camps and, in, and as well as people on their way to the camps for propaganda use. There are rarely photographs of people under duress. My dad was an amateur photographer and he had to give up his Kodak camera. So I've been able to sort of reconstruct what my parents went through because they couldn't take pictures of what's happening to them. They had the camera was gone. And so um, in that way, um, these archival photographs helped me uh, reconstruct what my parents went through. I got this invitation from the national director of the JCL in Washington in 2007 about this uh, campaign that's going to take place. And that's when I, I first met uh, Reagan Cooper and other people in PIC. When one looks into the history of immigration in the United States, there's something that has been recorded by Benjamin Franklin, who was complaining about these German immigrants who speak this unspeakable language, who have crude habits. They will never be assimilated to, into our culture. It just changes from decade to decade what the name, surnames of the people are, what they look like, what language they speak. Every generation has had something like that. So the people who are here find some argument. You can be detained without any charges. And that rings a bell within the Japanese American community. You're being detained without any charges. Haven't we seen that before? I've uh, made over the years, most of them I've taken myself. Uh, some of these, of course, are almost 50 years old. Kind of too old, maybe. This is one of my favorite. My grandson, when he was only like two or three. My grandson, um, who's now 15, I've been talking to him since about when he was um, eight or 10.
and, and he's began to ask me uh, when he was like 11 or 12, you know, what about this? And so what happened to you? And what happened to grandma and grandpa Nish? And so on. My granddaughter is, is probably about the time I should start the conversation with them as well. I feel that it's important to understand that and uh, to embrace it as part of their uh, heritage and identity. My grandson was only five years old. I was visiting him in Chapel Hill on summer day, and, and he, after dinner he comes up to me with a very serious look on his face and he says, Opa, do you know that I'm half Japanese? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what to say for a second. I thought, well, so what do you think about it, Kai? And he said, oh, I think it's great. I said, why? You know those Power Rangers and Ninjas on Saturday morning television? They're from Japan, and they're the good guys. Mm -hmm.